Let's get this party started. Coverage tight, spotlight on tomorrow. Who you win? Trust, you'll be delighted that you followed. At first contention, the invention. We debate sports, of course we should mention. What's that? We cover games, we don't play suspensions. We 100, so if your star's missing, we let you know your squad surely gone fishing. We never fish though, no, not our motto. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention First contention Welcome back, welcome back, we are back on the scene First Contention fans, welcome back to the show I am your host, Marvin S. Banks, reporting live here from Minneapolis Joined by my other two esteemed colleagues, Steve Davis out there on the East Coast What's going on, everybody? Strive higher every day. Happy New Year. Get ready for 2013. And Mr. Ty Woe Sosina from Minneapolis as well. Salutations. Good to be back on the show. Let's go. Let's dive right into it. Let's dive right into it. Um, let's talk about the shellacking that Alabama put on Notre Dame. If I'm not mistaken, I think the BCS championships should start right about now. Somebody tell me where should it start. But the question is, can you see Alabama going on another run like this next year? Steve, start us off. You know what? I definitely can see Alabama going on another run just because the way the college is set up, you can get the top players each year, especially if you're winning, especially if your name is Nick Saban, who has four national championships. It may have eight by the time he's done just because of what he's doing in Alabama. His system works. He always gets these big backs, got the big NFL-type defense. I mean, this team is the most NFL-ready team in the college college atmosphere, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Hmm. Interesting point, Steve. Um, I don't think no in a, no college team compete with an NFL team, but I see where you're going. Um, I would have to disagree. I'm going to – to go with the Bayou Bengals. Let's go with LeSue. I'm going with LSU to make a run at Alabama again next year. I think that the SEC is already the predominant conference. We already know that. But going through LSU, going through Texas A&M, going through Florida, going through Georgia and South Carolina again, to get back to a national championship is going to be uh, very difficult. I like LSU to prevail from the SEC next year. Hmm. Um, let's let me throw my three cents in here. You guys remember back when the UConn uh, women's basketball team was the safest bet in sports? Well, right now that's pretty much what Alabama's on, roll tide. And you got an amazing coach who does not stay in the present. You, you can't give him 30 days to prepare for a team. You saw what happened. He'll he celebrate this win five minutes. He's already preparing for Virginia Tech next year. So obviously SEC is the best conference, but I mean – they're just too well coached. They can get past A and M. They gotta deal with Manziel for the next three years. Get past LSU, and I mean, honestly, there's no stopping these guys. Roll tide, roll tide. Safe as bet in college football right now. Why you Bengals? Come on. Right, roll so, tide. I would say one thing that we've all learned is to never disrespect the SEC. They are a top conference, and that is for a reason because these guys are legit. Come on, but, Come on let's boy. move on. To our next topic, um, as you have seen this week, the MLB Hall of Fame decided to put no one in Cooperstown in 2013, mainly because of the steroid plague players, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens. It kind of put a cloud and a stigma over the whole class that the writers decided to put no one in. Now, honestly, to me, I think some of these guys deserve to get in just because of their statistical um, um, prowess and what they've done over their career, even before the steroid era. But obviously, some guys do not agree. What do you, I just want to hear from you guys. What What is your decisions or, or what do you think should have happened with the you know, the Baseball Hall of Fame? So, Ty, why don't you start us up? I mean, someone put it this way, and it made a lot of sense to me, that the, the Baseball Hall of Fame is kind of like a museum. So what do, what do we put in museum? What do we keep track of? We keep track of the good 
and bad. While some people may frown on this, I believe that you got to put this up there and let people decide for themselves. When you look at the Baseball Hall of Fame, you juxtapose that with the NFL Hall of Fame, where we have snubs every single year. Chris Carter still is not an NFL Hall of Fame. And in Cooperstown, we have no one elected to the Hall of Fame for a year. So, I mean, come on, there's got to be someone that you can throw in there. Yeah, I agree. What, what do you think, Mark? I, I honestly, I disagree. Uh, personally, honestly, um, you made your bed, now you have to sleep in it. You know, for those players that um, was taking illegal substances in a steroid era um, and didn't come out to admit it, if you took something in the past and now you get caught and you didn't have any um, punishment before and now your punishment is now, hey, you made your bed, now sleep in it. Honestly, and I can't, and I can agree with that. I mean, you look at Craig Biggio, who was the leading vote-getter this year, Yes, he has 3,000 hits, but when you say Craig Biggio, do you think a Hall of Famer? But who's to say who took anything in this era? You, they couldn't prove anything with any substantial evidence that these guys actually took anything. Of course, it could be 90% of the players took something they just didn't get caught. Especially uh, in the past, they've been taking greeny. So you got guys in the Hall of Fame that's been – you know, abusing stuff. So I just think these guys should just be in anyway just because of what they stand for as a baseball player. I'll break it down simple and easy. Steve, if you go to your mama's kitchen and she tell you, don't eat those cookies, you put your hand in there, you eat one. You still have some crumbs on your face. And she said, did you eat the cookies? No. You can't prove that I ate the cookies. <laughs> you didn't see me do it. But you see some resemblance of that. I might have ate the cookies. Okay, man. <laughs> All right, let's move All on right. to the next topic, fellas. Let's move on. All right, obviously, uh, we've, we're moving on to the divisional round in the 2013 NFL playoffs here. Um, it's pretty plain, cut and dry. What do you guys think is the best matchup going into this weekend? Let's start off with you, Garf. I still, we ain't got no worries. We ain't got no worries. It's a rock in here. Clay Matthews in here. C. Woodson in here. Because we ain't got no worries. We're going out west, man. Aaron Rodgers is going back home for the first time. He's going back out to Chico against San Francisco. Hmm. It has to, the best matchup has to be the Green Bay's defense, uh, Green Bay's offense against uh, the San Francisco defense. And. Aaron Rodgers back home and Chico back home because we ain't got no worries. All right, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, should be a good game, but, I mean, let's face it. Green Bay, y'all ain't got no defense. San Francisco's about to run up and down, y'all. No one wants to watch that. We already saw that at the beginning of the season. I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks in the ATL. Look at the headlines. You've got Matt Ryan. You've got Russell Wilson passed over, selected in the third round. He is now starting. You've got one of the two best corners in the NFC going against the best tandem in the NFC. And Richard Sherman and Brandon Brown are back from suspension going up against Roddy White and Julio Jones. It's got to be Atlanta to see if Matt Ryan can get this playoff win or not. One person is a rookie and the other one has no playoff wins. You tell me which team that is. (laughs) Don't disrespect the number one seed in the NFC. (laughs) Anyway, I would like to actually agree with Ty over here just because for the simple fact that so much pressure is on both of these teams, actually. I think Seattle is on a hot streak, and everybody is counting on them to basically go into Atlanta and smash them and knock them off the playoffs. But Matt Ryan seems to think this is the year, if any, for them to actually move on in the playoffs and make it to the NFC Championship. So they really need to make a statement this week, and Matt Ryan needs to step up for this team. So I think this is going to be the play. I mean, the, you know, I mean think about it. I mean, Atlanta was supposed to move past the first round a lot. They was in the number one seed two years. They was made to the playoffs three years. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But like I said, I've seen, I've seen this movie before. I swear I've seen this movie before with – Herman, yeah. yeah, Cornelius, I've seen this movie before where Atlanta was the top seed and going into the playoffs. I've seen this before. I've seen the outcome. 
It's well, like maybe, Saul. Well, maybe this might be a different outcome. It's like a white girl in a scary movie. We see the outcome. Remember this. You know, there are no excuses this year. Road team. This is going to be a good game. Seattle is not the best road team. This is going to be a good game. Watch out for this. Wait a second. I, it's like a white girl in a horror movie. We've seen this. He's coming. The killer's going to get you. He's <laughs> going to get you. And what do you do? You still fall down in the middle of a grass. No, he get up and get, start running some more. <laughs> no. Um, I'm predicting Seattle goes in and... Oh, oh no. I try yeah, key. yeah I, I predict Seattle go in and uh, do some damage to uh, AJ. Well, we'll see. That's why it'll be the game of the weekend. But anyway... I just want to ask you guys one more thing. As you guys probably have noticed, Carmelo Anthony and KG got into a little scuffle the other night in their heated matchup during the national championship. So apparently KG went across the lines and said something in the realms of, oh, your wife tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. So Carmelo Anthony obviously raised his piss level to a level 10 million and was ready to meet him out in the parking lot and be like, look here, man, you're going to be talking about La La like that because I'm going to have to put a foot in your face. So, obviously, he got suspended for it, but is that across the line? You know, KD said cancer stuff to Charlie Ville in the way, but now he's talking about people wise. What's up with KG, man? What do you think, Mark? Uh, honestly, I mean, yeah, it's bad, but... I've heard a whole lot worse stuff said in the middle of a game, so I can't even for Mr. KG. I, you can't talk I, about people's family, though, man. I know you can't, man, but you, man, think about it. In the 80s, I mean, people say, you know, I'm going to kill you after the game. You know, I mean, that was just regular trash talk. Anything goes in the 80s. Now, this new poo-poo basketball in 2012, I mean, you say, you know, you touch somebody wrong, you know, it's a flagrant two. You suspended for 19 games or 20 games, so... Um, I, I, it's bad, but I mean, I've heard worse. I, mean, I heard worse. <laughs> oh man, Ty, what you think, man? Mark, so you telling me someone walks up to your girl and tells them that they taste like a whole grain breakfast product? You ain't gonna be mad. Oh, KG okay. crossed the line. KG crossed the line. I'm gonna I mean, I'm just, there's getting into people's head, but this is downright dirty. You don't talk about people's family. You don't talk about people's girlfriends. I don't care how bad of a game Melo had. KG crossed the line. KG wouldn't have made it back to Boston if it was me. I would have put an elbow in his throat too. Man, I would have been, I would have been on the bus, waiting for him in the back seat, ready to fight like we used to do in elementary school. <laughs> Ding, ding. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you guys. This is our first episode for the 2013 year, and we're looking forward to many more episodes like this. So please continue to follow along for Marvin Banks and Ty Sosina. I'm Stephen Davis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, Rod in here. Clay Matthews in here. Woodson in here. And we ain't got, got no defense. defense. Ride with first contention, that's full throttle in. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. First contention. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. Game face grit, like born for playoffs Say it all in small time like payoffs